I want to take you back in time, way back in time to 1858, when the ox carts were moving in this area. And I want to show you and talk about my familiarity with this pan. 1858, and my husband said to me, as he was looking to retire from Kansas City and Fort Kansas, I want to go west. Will you come with me? Little did I know what that meant. As we moved on to do that, packed the ox cart, I wondered if I really, really had lost my mind. It shook, it rattled, and it rolled. And the reason it shook, rattled, and rolled was because it had wood wheels. Yes, wood wheels. And we had two oxen that pulled it. Now, because we were so loaded with everything that we needed to take with us that we couldn't sell, I walked most of the time barefoot alongside of the ox cart. And yes, this was hard to get used to, but once I got used to it and my feet got calloused, I was really, really good until the day I stepped on a beehive. And then I had to ride for a while until the swelling went down. We got up in the morning about 4.30 a.m. and the reason we did that is because the animals needed to be taken care of before we moved out at seven. That also meant that I had to have breakfast ready to go and the fire killed and the pots and pans and whatever else put away so that we could go. The, the wagon master was not happy if it did not go on time. And we were new. So because we were new, we needed to be most assured that we were able to be ready for him. Now, the interesting part of us getting from Kansas City up to this area was that we had to go east to go west. And that too seemed strange to me. And the reason we had to eat, go east to go west is because we had to reach the Missouri River. We followed the Missouri River until it got up to St. Cloud. But before that, we had to get to Pikes um, and, and the St. Paul Pig's Eye Landing it was called then. We know it as St. Paul today. Once we got to St. Paul, we had to wait a while. And as we waited, we regrouped. And it was, this was also interesting because in the regrouping, you never knew what the next group was going to be all about or how proficient they were in moving. Now, if you went from Pig's Eye Landing to St. Cloud, when you got there, you had to make a choice as well. And the choice you had to make there was, do you want to go up north to get to the Hudson Bay Company and north into Canada, or do you want to go west and hook up at the Red River to what we know today as the Northwest Trading Company that was in this area in 1858? Because my husband wanted to get into this western area, we waited until we had enough people to go with us, and we followed the tributaries along the route as we moved on west along the flat plains, sometimes what they called hills, but weren't necessarily mountains, but big hills at all. As we were doing this, my agreement with my son and my husband was this, I will cook anything you bring cleaned. There were days when I was not sure I had made the right decision. Because sometimes I was really happy, especially when they went fishing, because I was able to take those fish and I was able to sometimes bake them, sometimes I was able to smoke them, sometimes I was able to make a fish stew, it depended upon what kind of fish they were, how big they were, whatever. At other times it was a little bit more difficult, because sometimes what they would bring me were things like squirrel. Now squirrel isn't bad, rabbits were fine. The only problem with the rabbits was one time they were so plentiful that they spooked our animals. And when they spooked the animals, of course, that meant we as a train had to stop and wait while everybody regrouped. When I really wondered if I had done the right thing was the day that my son brought a beaver. Because he didn't bring the beaver part, he brought the tail. 
And the reason he brought me the tail was because the other friend that he was hunting with that day, that family was a very, very large family. And my son knew that that mother needed all of the meat off of that beaver. And he figured I could make something out of that tail. And I did. It meant that you cut up the middle and you take the bones out and you get some meat left. There was enough meat left for us. Not much more than for us that night, however. The other time that I really wondered whether I had spoken right or not was when he brought me a raccoon. Because you know when you take a raccoon, you have to get the sen cleanse out of the underarms and you have to get them off the back end of the body, up the spine. And that was not easy to do because I'd never done that before. But once you've done it, it works and it was okay too. The day that I was really, really worried was the day that he told me we were going to be stopping at Pelican Lake. All I could think about were those big, huge birds with that big mouth. And I had no idea what I would end up doing with that bird. But I didn't have to worry because in my son's infinite wisdom, he didn't bring me the bird, but he brought me 10 black crows. Did I make them? Yes, I did. I was careful how I made them. I got into my seasoning box and I seasoned them up good and proper so that I didn't think there would be any wild taste left to them. And I put them in a stew and they were pretty good. Would I eat crow again? Well, I didn't have to on that trip, but you know, if you're hungry enough, you'll eat most anything. It took us a long time to get from Kansas City up into this area because we were going 10 to 20 miles each day. But I'm so grateful for the time that we had as a family, for the people I learned to know, and for the experience I had cooking on the back end of an ox cart.